2018, you know, you were very open about your battle with cancer. And um, I, first of all, I admire your, your openness for it because I know that you immediately turned it into an opportunity to be able to educate and, and raise awareness. And I would love for you to touch on that experience. And I know how you believe that, uh, you know, there's cancer so taboo, especially amongst Persians and Persian women. So if you could please touch on uh, that experience and, and what you would hope to uh, accomplish by sharing more of your story. Um, yeah, I, I definitely um, felt uh, that there was an opportunity uh, after I got diagnosed to share my uh, experiences, uh, mainly because I quickly realized how little uh, I knew about the disease and the process and the treatment. And also I realized that um, maybe you know, people, women in Iran uh, are even in, in worse shape than me as far as uh, knowledge uh, and experience shared between each other about the, the process of cancer treatment and just surviving cancer emotionally and physically. So uh, really that was a, that sort of was a spark in my mind to enter the uh, social media jungle. And that's when I started my, uh, my Instagram. And I just uh, used it as a way to feel closer to women inside my country. I felt like it was a shared experience that it's so common among women and some men. It's a very common disease, but it's also so very treatable. The more knowledge you have about it and the more, uh, the less um, shame and fear to discuss things, um, the less people will die from this because it is something that it's very time sensitive. It's if you feel something, if you, if you feel a difference in your body, you know, you shouldn't fear the, the worst that you should, you should welcome going to the doctor because the sooner you go, the, the, the more likely it is that you will make a full recovery. And the experiences that I've heard, I, I've heard from women since I've shared my experiences that many were afraid, uh, they would, they had felt something, but they were just so afraid of of the consequences and they thought it was like a death sentence or they were ashamed because they were something defective about them or they were afraid that they would be judged by society that they had a defect or their daughters would have a defect and so that people wouldn't marry them things things that are just very strange to me here but like i realized those are the thoughts that especially people in the middle east have they, there's a lot of superstition around cancer so really it started like that. And then I realized, um, wow, this is so wonderful because you know, it's we all learn from each other. I've learned from women sharing with me and I hope people have learned from me and my experience. We, I made a lot of mistakes just out of ignorance, even though I, I was raised in a country where there's a lot of uh, campaigns for breast cancer awareness. I still uh, didn't fully know what, questions to ask my doctors and stuff. So I just, I, I took the opportunity and I'm, I'm glad I did. I mean, I was never embarrassed about it. So. Um, thank you for sharing that. Shaza, can, can you kind of um, share your experience from this when, when you first found out about it and uh, from, from a male and husband, Iranian husband standpoint, um, you know, what, what did you feel like your role was to, to support your wife during this truly challenging time? Well, first of all, there's no taboo subject or intimidating subjects that my wife and I would, would not be talking about, uh, including uh, all these aspects. And I must say uh, to the point that uh, her self-diagnosis was the reason why she probably saved her own life. Um, just having a mammogram is not enough uh, to pass uh, with a negative uh, detection, uh, thinking that you're totally okay, because in fact, Two, two weeks after she had her last mammogram, she felt uh, this little lump in her breast. And she told me, hey, you know, this is sort of odd and wasn't there before. And I said, I don't know. It could be maybe some kind of a cyst or something like that, but better check with a doctor. You never know. And it was not until the, autopsy, the uh, biopsy was done that they saw that it is uh, cancerous. And it was fortunately in the very early stage, stage 1A, as they call it. So... It was the kind that obviously would not uh, spread in the sense that you would need uh, chemotherapy or radiation following that, which would have been so difficult for her to have to endure even after opting to have a double mastectomy. But anyway, all of these aspects that we talked about, 
uh, is something that is an example of when men in the family also are aware of what's going on. And a woman, whether it's a sister or a mother or, or, or a daughter, talks about it, they need to have uh, the full support of the entire family from both sexes. And that's a culture that needs to be recreated in a country where these issues are taboo, especially if you're talking about a part of your body, which is a big no-no, right. and uh, at least in our cultures. Whereas you have to tackle the problem, have an open mind about it. And uh, hopefully this, this uh, modernity of thinking and behavior is something that would... Uh, at the end, only helps our society not to shy away from it. Uh, similar subjects we talk about, for instance, when we talk about the LGBTQ community in Iran and people who send me messages that are, for instance, transsexual or they have other issues and they're so alone and they don't have any support and all of these issues that need to be understood from every aspect, uh, psychologically, shine medically, a on shine a line on it. You know, if we started from ourselves and hopefully we try to, to spread this kind of uh, attitude as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, frowning at quote-unquote defects. So but he thing. also is, is quite, I think there's some husbands that maybe wouldn't have taken it in such stride. Like I've heard from a lot of women who, uh, you know, after having a double mastectomy, have their relationships have deteriorated. The man doesn't know how to handle the situation. Doesn't, right how to handle the disfigurement, can't. Whereas um, he like just dove right into the whole situation. He was the one who was the emptying my, uh, those drip things that they had put on me after surgery. He drains. Was, drains. He was the one who was cleaning my bandages, making sure I take my medication. And also I think the, the nicest thing that he did for me, which I think came totally naturally, I don't think he even realized, was that he never changed the way he looked at me after I changed, after my body looked different. Um, he he looked at me as he had always looked at me, you know, with love and affection. And so I was lucky and I really hope that the men out there realize that all women really want is for you not to think of them as having um, been, been changed so fundamentally to just, try to remember them as they as their soul not what their breasts look like awesome people i appreciate you watching this segment to watch the full video which you should please click up here and then if you want to join our text community the number is right about here and even though you don't need no reminders and you've heard a billion times if you like like the video subscribe hit the little ring of ding a ding ding bell so you can be notified for our next video thank you so much and appreciate you watching awesome people